Today's video will feature a comprehensive overview of 15 fragrances from Alchemia Perfumes, one of the more well-known indie brands out there. I bought two of their discovery sets. One is the, the Delectable Delights discovery set, and the other one is a selection of their best-selling fragrances. I'm going to go through all of these perfumes. I'm going to tell you what they smell like. I'm going to give you my thoughts. But before we get started, hello, my name is Anya. I publish fragrance videos on the internet. I'm also active on Instagram and TikTok. Talk, I post on there daily. So if you're interested in following me on those social media platforms, my name my, or my username is Anishka Fragrances. I also publish videos on here weekly. So if you're interested in seeing my videos on fragrances, be sure to stick around, click the subscribe button and keep your notifications turned on. So I do have my notebook with all my notes regarding what these fragrances smell like to me. I'm also going to read out the scent descriptions, but keep in mind, these are meant to be a discovery into the fragrances provided for by Alchemia Perfumes. I did not like every single fragrance I smelled, but I was surprised at the ones I did like. Arabesque is described as beautifully aged Arabian sandalwood, Egyptian kefi, sweet orris root, benzoin, resin, cassia, and blessed spikenard. In my notes, I've described this fragrance as saccharine sweet, resinous, with a woody undertone. And I absolutely think that's accurate. This is a really pretty woody fragrance. I really enjoyed it. It smells to me on first impression, almost like being in, almost like being like in a very old timey furniture shop. I know that sounds very odd, but I next up we have Cherries of the Night. This is described as a naughty flirtation of black cherries exquisitely bathed in maraschino liqueur, cherry amber, musky black amber, dark spiced rum, warm nutmeg, and Peruvian balsam. In my notes, I have this as maraschino cherries with a rich boozy undertone. This is great if you tend to really like cherry fragrances. If I'm going to be honest, I've kind of phased myself out of liking new cherry fragrances at the moment. I still appreciate the cherry note, but I'm not as excited about cherries as I once was. Of course, this might change, but and while I do think this is a great cherry fragrance, it's not the most fascinating fragrance for me out of this selection. Elixir of Aphrodite was one I was very impressed by. It's described as a love spell of Persian apricots dipped in orange blossom honey, swirling with a central enchantment of peach and plum blossoms, mimosa, white star jasmine, and brett, guyac wood, and vanilla musk. In my opinion, this is a juicy ripe apricot with a touch of honey and mimosa. I really like this one. It's one of my absolute favorites. This is definitely hands down a lovely photorealistic apricot that's just about to be overtly ripe, but it's not just there yet. It's so photorealistic. And I like how that there are a lot of elements here that make this fragrance very light and sweet. It's not too sweet. It's just it's just really lovely, and this is one I'd consider putting on my full bottle wish list. I love this scent. I think it's amazing. Another one I really appreciated was Enigma, and this was a surprise for me because the description is decidedly very non-flowery. It's an anti-perfume and rumored to have pheromonic qualities. Iso Super E is a subtle scent aura morphing with pulsations of subtle musk, dry woods, and ambergris. This is a really intoxicating perfume. It's quite musky. It's a clean musk. Let me smell it once again. Um, oh, this is really good. I love this. I will definitely be getting a full size of this at some point. I think this and Elixir of Aphrodite are some of my top two favorites from this line that I've tried. This is really, really good. The musk here is similar to the musk that's present in Narciso by Narciso Rodriguez. That's a discontinued fragrance that I personally really love. That one has white florals paired with an almost animalic musk. This is a similar musk, but it's cleaner. And I don't smell... 
I don't smell any white florals right off the bat, but this is absolutely the kind of perfume that I would love to have a larger size of. This is an absolute standout in my personal opinion. Then we have Gothic, a Byzantine monastic incense of Samalian frankincense, Sintrach benzoin, Arabian myrrh, cassia, spikenard, spike snart, liquid amber orientalis, lapnum atlas cedar, and vetiver. To put it completely simply, this smells like a very dark and dramatic church fragrance, but something that's very um, edgy and very, I would say, yes, dark. Um, it's really, really good. Um, is it my style at the moment? No, so I can't see myself getting a full size of this anytime soon. But boy, oh boy, it does this smell really wonderful. And I feel like I personally, I mean, this, I mean, most, I think all of these fragrances are unisex in my personal opinion. I think anyone can wear these. But if I smell this on a guy, yeah, it would, that would be it for me because this smells amazing. And I feel like if this was on like a guy, it would smell like very, very nice. You know what I mean? It's it, this is that kind of kind of fragrance I'd love to smell on a guy because it's just very, I don't know. It's just very dark and very uh, moody and quite nice in my opinion. So if you are a guy and you're looking for a fragrance that's very woody, that is attention grabbing, that one is one to check out. Lilacs along the winding drive is definitely, of course, heavy on the lilacs. This includes purple lilac bushes, a light spring rain, a pebble driveway, and a small handful of late blooming violets. And in my notes, I have this as a nostalgic garden scent. And that is absolutely something I do stand by because this is this is very flowery, almost has like this powdery essence to it. If you like lilacs, you might like this. This smells really good because in my opinion, this does evoke that sense of nostalgia for me. This makes me feel like I'm in a garden and I really like it because of that. Would I wear it on myself personally? Probably not. But one of the reasons I have been liking my experience with Alchemia perfume so far is because a lot of their scents actually evoke memories for me. And that's what I really, uh, really like, especially about this Discovery Set experience. Um, a lot of these perfumes are quite nostalgic and I don't know if that's intentional, but this is definitely one that I have been smelling a little bit on and off. I haven't actually worn this one because I don't know if lilacs are my style at this point, but I really do like this smell. The next one is Luminate. This one is described as a skin glow, a soft scent to enchant your skin with a luminescence of olfactory radiance. And let me just smell this to make sure I have my opinion right, because I do have thoughts on this one. Um, this is not my favorite, and let me tell you why. So. I, I don't know if you know this or not, but I personally am very sensitive to milky scents. Um, sometimes they go sour to my nose and I just, I'm very sensitive to certain notes that are associated with a milky, with a milky scent. And this is one of those fragrances. To me, this smells like a milky kind of like, almost like a woody undertone. And I don't know if I like this one. Uh, this is just not a scent that I, have been gravitating towards and it's not my favorite but if you are into a slightly lactonic edge to your perfumes you might enjoy this this is personally not my cup of tea moss maiden is absolutely just like what it sounds like this is described as luxuriant mosses lichen calamus root cedar tips and disturbed leaves I have described this scent in my notes as forest floor after rain, and that is still absolutely what I think this smells like. It's just a very, very um, intense forest mossy scent. You can definitely smell what they're going for with the leaves. It's just really pretty. Is this my style? No, but if you want to smell like a forest nymph, this is possibly one to consider. Um, again, I like the way it smells, but I wouldn't wear it on myself because I don't really wear a lot of mossy and earthy scents. 
but I can see someone really enjoying this if you are into those accords. One of the most popular fragrances from Alchemia perfumes is Silk Content. They describe this perfume as candied angelica, chrysanthemums, white flowering nardo, clove flowers, jasmine scented rice pudding, blonde caramel infused with golden amber. I am very impressed by Silk Content because it combines so many different elements all in one fragrance without seeming overpowering or too focused on one particular category. You do have a slight gourmand aspect with that caramel. You have an ambery base. You have those herbal elements, but it all comes together quite beautifully and it really is a fragrance that I think is so versatile and I would say mass appealing but very unique at the same time. We are going to segue into the Delicious Delights sample set. This is a selection of six fragrances and this was a set that really surprised me. Some of these fragrances I was expecting to like and I didn't. Others I kind of wrote off a bit. I was curious about smelling them but I didn't expect them to like them. I didn't expect to like them as much as I ended up adoring them. So let's get started with Calliope. This is a fragrance that that is described as a the diversament I can't read a diversissement of diversissement of piquant clementine orange blossoms white orchid tonka vanilla musk with flirtations of cotton candy floss and salt water taffy now you may know how sensitive I am to salty scents when it comes to fragrances. One area that I do like salt is when it's added to gourmand fragrances to give it a little bit of diversity, especially if the fragrance is sweet. Now, I was not expecting to like this one as much as I did, and I will say this, the way Alchemia has done the cotton candy note is something I really, really like. It's just light and like this light cloud of sugary sweetness that I really, really like. This is, this is really pretty, it's fun, um, it's vibrant, and I just really like this scent, and I just think it's pretty. I really like it. So um, it has the orange blossom, which explains why I like it since I love orange blossom so, so much, but yes, the cotton candy floss note, I really like this one. In a similar vein, we have Carnival of Illustrious Hearts. This is a glittering gala of French sugar creams, candied orange blossoms, raspberry cotton candy, rose water tort filling, and bourbon vanilla amber. And let me tell you, I love the raspberry touch in this. Again, you get that similar cotton candy note that's present in Calliope, but this is really, really pretty. It's a little bit more um, fruity than the previous one I mentioned. It's a little less focused on the florals and it's more of a sugary scent, but it's so much fun. I really like this one. Yeah, I like both of them. I think I like Calliope a bit more because it's more floral, but I can absolutely see myself reaching for Carnival of Illustrious Hearts as well. Next up, we have County Fair. Now, this one was one I was super excited about smelling because it has a popcorn note, which is absolutely intoxicating. This is described as an old fashioned American carnival midway with pink cotton candy, hot kettle corn, fresh funnel cakes, candied apples, and salt water taffy. Again, you have that slight saltiness, but it's not overpowering in the slightest. I think it's just there to balance out those sweet, scents and oh my goodness it smells really really good i can absolutely see this being a go-to gourmand for myself in the fall this is really nice i love the popcorn in here as well i can still smell that popcorn even after i've closed that little dabber it smells amazing next up we have magpie's rhyme now if you remember just a few moments ago i talked about how i'm not as big of a fan of the way they do their lactonic notes and that is not harping on the way they have blended these fragrances i'm just like i said very sensitive to certain lactonic scents and i will say this this is growing on me i didn't like it when i first smelled it but now that i'm smelling it again it does smell nice um it is is exactly in my opinion like animal crackers with like a lactonic 
uh, roundness to it that I really do appreciate. Um, it's described as a nostalgia of animal crackers, warm milk, a soft blanket, and luminescent white amber daydreams. I think one of the reasons I have been growing on this fragrance is because, or this fragrance has been growing on me, is because of that amber. I really like the way they do their amber bases. It's really, it's quite pretty. Again, this is not my favorite fragrance because of that like tonic note, but I do like the combination with the animal crackers. It is a pleasant perfume, but I feel like I'd like it more, say, in a candle than on my skin because I'm, like I said, very sensitive to those like tonic notes. Next up, we have Circe. This is described as a confection of affection with heavenly rose water chiffon, soft jasmine musk, flirty mandarin orange, creamy vanilla, and Egyptian amber. Now, I need to smell this again to remind myself of what this one smells like. I think I really, really like this one, so let me get my nose on it again. Yeah, this is really nice. I do love the orange in here. Again, I love how they do their uh, gourmand fruity citrusy notes. The orange here is quite nice. And what else is in here? Uh, the jasmine musk, Egyptian amber, creamy vanilla. This is really, really pretty. Yeah. Yeah, no, this one's nice as well. It's a really nice vanilla fragrance. I really do like it. We also have Trick or Treat. This has black licorice, mandarin orange peel, caramelized brown sugar, bourbon vanilla, candied ginger, tonka bean, blonde patchouli, cedar tips, oak moss, and sandalwood. Now, I really, really like the way they do the orange peel in this fragrance. It is quite photorealistic and absolutely lovely. This smells really, really good. So unlike the name suggests, I feel like this could be a year round fragrance because it has a little bit of a citrus to it, but it's very sweet. This is definitely an almost, um, this is definitely a gourmand scent. It just smells really good. I love how the orange is quite photorealistic. These are not scents that smell artificial to me. These are very photorealistic perfumes and sometimes citruses can be a bit be a bit abrasive, but the way they've done their oranges and their citrus accords here is just so photorealistic. Same thing with the apricot that I mentioned with the elixir of Aphrodite. I really like the way they've done their uh, fruity scents. I love the way they did their oranges. And I also, I mean, going back to the fruitiness, I really like that apricot scent that I mentioned in Elixir of Aphrodite. I was very surprised by Enigma. That one is in standout for me. And I also love the cotton candy scent. And I don't think, I'm usually not obsessed with like scents like cotton candy, but this I really like. That completes this video. Thank you so much for watching till the end. I very much appreciate it and I hope you gained some value from this video. I will be publishing videos weekly on this channel moving forward. And if you're interested in seeing what I posted a few videos ago, I was talking about my favorite summer scents. I also have a haul coming in the pipeline that I'm really excited to share with you. And like I mentioned earlier at the beginning of this video, if you're interested in seeing more of me. I do post daily on TikTok and Instagram. Once again, thank you so much for watching till the end of this video and I'll see you next time.